Our next presenter is an engineer who works at State, a piano teacher, a symphony volunteer, and a hiker. But when she recently celebrated a birthday, one of those big O's, she decided to improve herself by working, by working exercise into her daily routines. Marie Griffin brings us a story with some of the little changes she's making to enhance her body, mind, and spirit as she ventures into her next decade. I'm Marie Griffin, and like they said, I recently celebrated a birthday in January. It was a big one with an O in it, and no, it wasn't 20. <laughs> yeah, so looking at my birthday, I, I wanted to, to get away from the ravages of aging, so I asked my friends how they fit micro-exercise into their life, and that's what this story is about, micro-exercise for body, mind, and spirit. So when I was young, living was laughing, was learning, was all put together, it was fun, into this trifecta of living, body, mind, and spirit. But as I got older, things got more complicated, and there seemed to be less time to do things like exercise. Well, Steve Jobs said that time is one of our most valuable resources, and certainly it is, and I was trying to find time to fit exercise back into something that was already full, a full schedule. So I call this squishy time, because I was trying to squish exercise back into my full agenda. I'm doing squishy exercise already, I'm taking the stairs, I park far away in the parking lot, I'm using the uh, carry basket at the grocery store, um, I do toe lifts while I'm waiting on the microwave and wall push-ups, but there had to be other ways to add in um, exercise, so I reached out to friends and I asked them what they're doing. It was amazing what came back, just some great ideas for exercises for body, mind, and spirit, and they fit into four basic categories. And they were balance, strength, flexibility, and endurance. So I'm gonna share some of these with you. Let's, uh, let's see how these all fit together. Put your foot out, okay? Your right foot, make clockwise circles, and now with your right hand, draw the number six. What happened to the direction of your foot? See, there's a connection. There's a body, body, mind, spirit connection in there. I can't explain it, but it just is there. If you do something for one, it, it, it affects the whole thing. So I had this uh, professor in college, art professor, Steve Jepson. He's retired from that, but he, had, um, he has started a movement called Never Leave the Playground, and it's about how as we age, we can retain our youthfulness. And he said that as people get older, they fall down more. And he calls it folly downiness. So note to self, work on balance. And I notice, hey, there are little tiny balance beams in my neighborhood on either side of the street. Yeah, so when I'm walking, I'm working on my balance because I'm walking on the curb. Another part about balance is balance in your life. And I have a dear friend who reminds me to stay positive, And she laughs at my joke. And I just reach out and I say, thank you so much. Uh, my mom uh, was a great example of how to have balance in your life. She had friends from all generations, all cultures, all backgrounds. They made this giant sphere of creativity and positiveness. They love to laugh together and spend time together. Laughter is great medicine. Strength, OK? so. Uh, first strength, one of my friends told me that I overthink things. This hurt, but I needed to hear it, and I, I really appreciate that she told me that. Um, kegels, anybody here doing them? <laughs> they're invisible. You can't see them. And Harvard says that they're one of the five best exercises that anybody can do. Another friend told me that I should do one-legged squats. Well, that wasn't happening. But I can do plies while I brush my teeth. Another friend posted on my Facebook page that sex is good exercise. Hey, I agree, but I must be doing it wrong. It's not a micro-exercise for me. <laughs> it's kind of macro, actually. So for, for um, intellectual strength, I try to look at the funny things in life, because you know life is kind of funny sometimes if you appreciate that. And also I try to see things from different perspectives and, and learn new kinds of things and, and join new groups and um, do Pecha Kucha talks and things like that to you know, help expand. Flexibility, why is flexibility important? Okay, so back to sex, without flexibility, <laughs> karma sutras out of the question. Okay, another part about flexibility is um, how are you going to continue it with your life? Because as I get older, I'm getting less and less flexible. So it's something that I have to continue working on. Pecha Kucha talk, like I mentioned before, it's really helping me. I'm feeling like an impala. I'm stretching out there. Um, I was driving in my car, and I had a friend. She said, 
why are you using the backup camera? You can be stretching. So I don't use it so much, and I'm great stretching this way, not, not so much this way. Time, yeah. So when I was young, before I got married, I set every clock in my house a different amount of time ahead because I thought, oh, that's going to help me remain flexible. So I would go up to a clock, remember how much was ahead, do a little math problem. <laughs> well, yeah, I got married, and my husband was not enamored of this idea, so <laughs> to keep peace in the family now, I set all my wristwatches at different times. Endurance. My cousin uh, rides her bike instead of driving her car, and that helps to bolster her endurance. University of Missouri says if you walk with a dog, you can walk up to 24% faster. My dog is an outlier because he walks really, really slow. Another friend told me I should get up off the couch, change channels, and also I should make my own coffee. Well, the couch thing, yeah, I'm good with that. Couch potatoes, not good. The coffee thing, this is my husband, Craig. I'm not giving that up first thing in the morning. <laughs> when it gets darkest, the stars come out. And a dear friend gave me this mustard seed of faith. To me, faith means having hope. And by being grateful, I have more hope. So when I go to bed at night, I thank my God. I say, thank you, and it helps me to have hope. And speaking of going to sleep, how many of you when you were kids didn't like to go to bed? Yeah, me neither. I still don't. I don't like stopping what I'm doing, putting it aside, going and getting in bed, lying down, and expecting myself to be still and go to sleep. It just doesn't work for me. But sleep is so important because it helps us to recover body, mind, and spirit from the rigors of the day. So I'm working on that. So I'm looking forward to this new decade, looking forward to find new ways to engage body, spirit, and mind. So I thank everybody who gave me these great ideas that I've shared with you tonight, and also thank you for coming and listening. And I would love to hear how you add macro exercise into your life in squishy time.